Terrorism has changed the world, and Australia is not immune. But the way of life that we value so highly must go on. Australians are friendly, decent, democratic people. And we're going to stay that way. Our security agencies have been upgraded and are ready to detect, prevent and respond to terrorism. All of us can play a part by keeping an eye out for anything suspicious. Over the coming weeks, the Commonwealth Government will be providing you with more information on how we can work together to protect our way of life. Be alert, but not alarmed. Together, let's look out for Australia. If you see something suspicious, call 1-800-123-400. This is the story of Windradine, a warrior, and the Wiradjuri people, who were known as the people of the Three Rivers, the Wambul, Kalari, and Murrumbidgeri. Windradine was a Wiradjuri elder. He was a fine athletic man, a great strategist and superb leader. He successfully led a guerrilla warfare against the British for a number of years. In the Aboriginal way, life was precious. Family and the environment were very important and must be protected. Wiradjuri and Aboriginal people in general had their own law, language and cultural practices. War was the result of settlers coming west of the Great Dividing Range, wanting Wiradjuri land for farming and grazing and a place to live. Settlers began to establish a township known as Bathurst in the northeast part of the Wiradjuri nation. The conflict between the Wiradjuri people and the European settlers gradually escalated until Winderdine's family was killed in what is known as the Potato Field Incident. This was the catalyst that propelled the Wiradjuri into war with the British. In regards to warfare, the Wiradjuri had their rules of engagement. In the Wiradjuri way, if there was a score to settle, the clans didn't wipe each other out. They would stand and yell and throw spears at each other until blood was drawn. These were the rules that they abided by. From the Wiradjuri perspective, the British had no rules of engagement and resorted to any means possible to kill and contain any Wiradjuri opposition. In fact, it became open slather where they would hunt down innocent Wiradjuri people. Under the United Nations Geneva Convention, this would be illegal today. This led to the Wiradjuri changing tactics to actually fight a war. Some of Winderdine's tactics were to surround a hut because the Wiradjuri knew that if the shepherd fired his musket that was when they could rush him because they knew that it would take him time to load his weapon. George Sutton, great, great grandfather, uh, wrote a letter to, to the Sydney press, I presume mid-1820s, uh, and signed this letter uh, Colo, short for colonial, uh, just his address as Bathurst. Anyway, it, it, it's assumed that this letter had to be from, uh, from George Sutter, and he describes Windredine as being a, uh, a very fine, 
physical specimen, a large, uh, a large man, very well built, um, and I suppose this set him probably uh, a bit above his peers, and it was just, I, I guess he was just uh, a natural leader uh, of his tribe. Uh, this list letter goes on to describe him as uh, as an Adonis. <laughs> So he must have been a fine, a fine looking man. Uh, great grandfather. Um, well there again, he must have been uh, uh, a fairly extraordinary, extraordinary young man uh, to lead this expedition over the mountains when he was only 17 uh, and then to settle down and uh, and learn and learn the language. He, he must have had some um, empathy with the uh, with the Aborig Aborigines right from the word go. And I suppose really to uh, to go right back to the uh, crux of our situation. Anyway, if the story is true, that it was uh, the local Wiradjuri who who told great great grandfather uh, about the junction of the creeks and, and the flats. Uh, they must have been getting on well, uh, right from the word go. Uh, why this should have been <laughs> exceptional, uh, I don't know.